right so we are discussing about validation during the life cycle of an analytical procedure according to ICS guideline Q2R2 in the last few videos we try to understand how to define the performance characteristic in case if there are changes into the manufacturing processes so as a part of this video we will try to understand in case if there are any change into the analytical procedure very specifically into the HPLC methods how one can determine the performance characteristic or the validation parameters hi my name is Bhaskar Napte I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to provide absolute clarity on a, such a very important technical topic to the pharmaceutical professionals so in case if you are interested to join the Pharma Growth Hub platform you will find the details in the description below let us now begin the discussion on which performance characteristics should be considered for the below changes into the HPLC procedure. The first change could be the change in the method parameters. Now there are different method parameters like flow rate, column temperature, detection wavelength and we will try to understand the impact of each and every change onto the method validation. Let us understand the first change that is the change in the flow rate. Suppose your initial flow rate is maybe 1 ml and uh, you are changing it to maybe for some reason uh, 0.7 ml per minute, isn't it? So how the change is going to influence onto your testing procedure? What is the reason behind this 1 ml to 0.7 ml per minute change? And that has to be first understood before you jump on concluding the performance characteristic suppose you have made the change to achieve the desired des resolution the resolution with maybe 1 ml per flow 1 ml flow rate is not sufficient and if you change this flow rate to 0.7 ml you are able to achieve the resolution of maybe around 2.0 which is the requirement as per your testing procedures system suitability test so this 0.7 ml per minute is going to help you to increase the resolution. So what is the impact of this change going to be then? What is the negative impact going to be? Let us understand if the flow rate gets changed, maybe probably you can think of uh, the peak height can get changed. Right? Peak height can be, can be lowered, isn't it? And what is the impact of the change in the peak height now? Could be the plate count can get low. Right? The plate count can get low. So whether this plate count is the is getting compromised. So this becomes your part of your change control process, isn't it? Or you can think about maybe as a part of my validation, uh, revalidation or partial validation, I need to confirm the SST if the peak height or tailing factor is part of my system suitability test in addition to the plate count of course your tailing factor may get increased tailing may also get increased so how this drop in the flow rate from 0.7 right so sorry from 1 ml to 0.7 ml per minute is not influencing onto our plate count and also the tailing factor this must be part of your change control process. You cannot justify the change provided you justify that yes, there is a drop in plate count, but it is not significant and we are still able to get the desired plate count, maybe more than 2000 or something like that. Same is the application for applicable for the tailing factor also. So in case you could justify this with your change control that yes, we have conducted the testing procedure with 0.7 ml per minute our proposed change in the flow rate right 0.7 ml per minute and my plate count is so good my tailing factor is also absolutely fine so the change can be probably acceptable now what are the influence on to the performance characteristics your earlier conducted validation now you may you might have conducted the validation for maybe specificity precision accuracy linearity degradation for robustness parameters so whether this change is going to influence on to any of your performance characteristics maybe the specificity what do you think about the specificity now the interference because of your diluent 
or interference because of your any sample matrix possible. So I doubt on this parameter. So it is very important that according to me, this parameter needs to be performed. I say yes. What about the precision? What about precision? See, because this particular change is made to increase the resolution to greater than 2.0. So if the resolution gets better and better, my peak integration is going to be much more precise, accurate and easy. So because of that, you know, my method's precision is going to get increased but not going to get decreased. And same is the case with the accuracy also. So what do you think? Whether do you need to perform the precision and accuracy? Provided our peak height is not getting compromised, provided our plate count and tailing factor is not getting compromised. So according to me, there is no as such need for performing the precision. But as a part of the precaution, you can always perform the precision at least along with the specificity. Accuracy, what is going to be the influence onto the accuracy part? It is going to get better, isn't it? So there is no as a challenge in a challenge on getting the recoveries or accuracy result. So again, the accuracy may not be required as far as uh, the flow rate change is concerned, but you can only perform the accuracy maybe at 100% level. Your working level can be assessed for the accuracy. That's it. Rest other tests, rest other levels may not be assessed as a part of accuracy study. What about the uh, solution stability? What about the filter compatibility? Right. I don't think so. It is required, so not applicable. Same is the case for filter compatibility or filter study. If you are doing the filtration, it is not required. Uh, what about the robustness now? At least you perform the robustness with the change in the flow rate now. Earlier your robustness was done with the reference of 1 ml per minute flow rate. So you perform the robustness at least for the new flow rate. Right. With the new flow rate, you can perform the robustness study. So this is the final conclusion, probably according to my understanding, that yes, the specificity is mandatory, needs to be performed. Precision and accuracy is good to have. Right. Solution stability is not required. Then filter compatibility or filter study is not required. And finally, robustness study is required with the new revised flow rate. So these are going to be the part of your partial validation protocol in case if you are making the change in the flow rate. So what is the next parameter now? That is the column temperature. See so in the last part we discussed about the change in the flow rate. Isn't it? And in this particular discussion we will try to understand if I am making the change in the column's temperature. I have the column temperature maybe 40 degrees Celsius. This is my current column temperature. I want to make the change maybe from uh, 40 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius to maybe the 60 degrees Celsius. Now, what is the purpose of making this change? See, each and every change has to be justified. You cannot just make a change for sake of uh, changing it. You know, there must be some reason. So why this change is made? Maybe for, uh, for improved... Uh, for improved uh, peak tailing, right? Our peak is not sharp, it's 40 degrees Celsius and with the 60 degrees Celsius, you found that the peak is better and your peak tailing result is, is, is always uh, maybe 1.02, maybe 1.2. It is very much preferred. So you have moved up more ahead with the proposal of 60 degrees Celsius. So what is the influence of this change in the column temperature on the performance characteristics now? What is going to be impact? And there are the parameters maybe like you can think about the first one is specificity. Right? The first one is going to be the specificity. So what is the impact on to the specificity now? What do you think? Will there be impact on the specificity? Because there is improved peak tailing of the peak. Now, See, because of the draw, increase in the temperature, there may be change in the small retention time also. If you are getting the retention time of maybe let us say earlier uh, 6 minutes 
at with the 40 degree celsius with the 20 is the 60 degree celsius the retention time may be let us say five minute may not be that much drop but i will say 5.5 minute possible so because of the change in the retention time can there be a change in the specificity of the testing procedure i'm not sure so because of that it is very important to perform the specificity so from my side it is yes for performing the specificity now what is the impact on the precision what is the impact on to the accuracy what is the impact on to the linearity what is the impact on to the robustness whether these parameters get impacted because of the increase in the temperature i don't think so so precision such as such will not get impacted just because of the change in the retention time but to be on safer side it is nice to have so perform the specificity and yes accuracy also may not get impacted but perform at least at one level maybe 100 percent level linearity is not required uh, robustness is uh, required only for only for column temperature the rest parameter is not required what about the solution stability now in case if your sample is thermally unstable if your sample is going under thermal degradation then the solution stability may be required at this 60 degrees celsius in case if it is not a concern then you can wave of this solution stability there is no impact on to the filter compatibility also so it's not required so these are the important parameters you can think of if you are making the change in the column temperature the first one is specificity the second one is precision accuracy uh, then linearity is not required robustness only with the column temperature solution stability required in case if your solution is having a uh, if your analyte is having the thermal degradation, filter compatibility is not required. And rest other parameters I think we discussed. So this is the protocol for your partial validation. Let us now understand the next validation parameter, which is that. What is that one? Sorry, the change in the validation, a change in the HPLC parameter that is the detection wavelength. And we'll talk about that parameter in the next video. Thank you so much.